Hi, Anastasia here. In this video, I will show you all the keyword research methods and tools that I use for my blog. We will start with the tools targeting keywords in Google, and then we will move on to Pinterest keyword research because these are my top traffic sources. I will also show you a secret strategy that allows you to get the best of the two worlds. Google and Pinterest SEO. So stick with me until the end. Now, when you're writing a blog post, your article will not rank for just one keyword. It will always rank for a bunch of related terms. For example, if you're targeting how much can you make on TikTok, you might also rank for related phrases like how to get paid on TikTok or monetize TikTok. Same intent, just slightly different wording. So you want to create content that matches the intent behind the searches, not just specific phrases. And so you want to find as many of those related keywords as possible to include them in your content. So where do we get started? Google has some fantastic free tools for keyword research. You just need to know how to use them. Let's start with Google's auto-suggest feature. Here is how it works. Start by brainstorming a keyword relevant to your blog or business. For example, let's use best barbecue sauce as, as the main keyword. Type this keyword in the Google search bar and then go through the alphabet one letter at a time. For example, best barbecue sauce A, best barbecue sauce B, and so on. Here, Google suggests keywords that people are actively searching for. Write down in your notebook anything relevant to your blog. You can also use an underscore as a wildcard like best barbecue sauce to see if there are any suggestions with other words in the middle that might be interesting for you. This method is simple but powerful for uncovering what your audience is searching for. Another great tool is Google's People Also Ask section. This appears below most search results and shows questions that people are typing into Google. So what you need to do is expand each question to reveal more suggestions. Point out the relevant keywords or questions for your blog. And when you've gone through all the suggestions, search for another keyword and repeat the process. And here is a little pro tip. The more you expand these questions, the more Google will suggest. So don't stop too soon. Another handy tool in Google search result is called People Also Searched For. Scroll to the bottom of any search results page and you will find this section. This is another treasure trove of keyword ideas that can spark new blog topics. And of course, we also have Google Keyword Planner. Here is how to access it. Search for Google Keyword Planner and create a Google Ads account if you don't already have one. And by the way, don't worry, you don't have to run any ads. Once you're inside, you might see a prompt like this to discover keywords or just go to the Tools and Settings tab and find the Keyword Planner under the Planning section. Enter a seed keyword, something like Best Barbecue Sauce and click Get Results. The tool will show you a list of related keywords along with their search volumes, helping you prioritize the most popular ones. Now let's talk about how to find keyword opportunities for your existing blog. So if your blog is not brand new, it likely already ranks for some keywords. It always makes sense to double down on what's already proven to work well for your blog. So we need to find keyword opportunities that are relevant for your website. And for that, we're going to use your existing keyword profile. So here is how we will start analyzing what you're already ranking for, but maybe you could improve these articles just a bit to get to the very top search results. Google is already signaling you that your site is doing well for these keywords. So why not build on that? So here is what we'll do. Use a tool like SEMrush, who kindly sponsored this part of the video. It's my favorite SEO and keyword research tool. SEMrush has comprehensive data on every keyword, allowing you to see its current search volume, how it's trending, how difficult it is to rank, allowing you to uncover unique content opportunities in the most profitable niches. So what we will do is go to organic research and enter your domain. Then click on positions to see the keywords that you rank for in the top 100. I usually start with the keywords that I call no-brainers. 
I just apply the positions filter and I find keywords that already are ranking in the positions from 2 to 15. I also use two more filters, this one by Keyword Difficulty KD to focus on easy keywords, and I also click on Volume to move to the top of the list the keywords within these parameters that have the highest potential search volume. If your site has very few keywords within, say, top 15, then you can apply the same filters to find keywords in the positions 16 to 15. These pages should be on your to-do list as well to optimize them better and improve the rankings. My favorite feature here is Keyword Gap. This is where I can add several competitors and see which keywords they're already ranking for and maybe I completely missed these keywords. Now I can add these topics to my content plan and try to rank for them as well. Whether you're just starting out, SEMrush can save you and help you get the job done. Let SEMrush give you the keyword insights that you need to grow your business. Visit trysemrush.com slash Anastasia Blogger to try 14 days for free. And now we are moving to the second platform that I also use for free organic traffic. It's Pinterest. I use it for traffic, but I also will tell you something that most people ignore or maybe just have no idea about. You can get a ton of Google traffic because your site is doing well on Pinterest. Now that we're transitioning from Google keyword research, you should also know that your pin image can rank in both the main search page on uh, Google and also in Google image search, and it can drive you a lot of traffic that way. Pinterest also helps your site's overall traffic on Google because your pages get a lot of shares and other social engagement signals that will help with Google SEO indirectly. So it's definitely worth working on your Pinterest traffic. And as a byproduct of this, you will also improve your positions in Google. We will talk about Pinterest SEO and how it can help you drive traffic to your website for free. But by the way, I'm currently getting around 70,000 outbound clicks to my site every month from my Pinterest account, which has over 10 million monthly viewers. I've been sharing Pinterest tips on this channel for the past seven years. And this year I found a new way to do keyword research for Pinterest faster and in a more reliable way. If you're new to this, you should know that Pinterest SEO is kind of similar to Google SEO. You optimize your pins so that they can appear when users search for specific keywords or topics on Pinterest. For example, if I search for best vegetarian appetizers, Pinterest shows me pins that match this exact topic and it does a pretty good job. That's the power of Pinterest SEO in action. When it comes to Pinterest keyword research, my go-to tool now is PinClicks. It makes the process faster and more effective than ever before. Let's take a broad and popular keyword like home decor ideas. When you search for it, Pinterest provides additional keyword suggestions along with a red popularity scale showing which keywords are trending. But here is something that most people don't even know. Pinterest recently started showing search volumes on certain idea pages. These are the pages are, that are somewhat hidden on the platform. For example, on an idea page like Home Decor Ideas Bathroom, you might see that it has around 2000 monthly searches. While you can stumble across these pages manually through Pinterest's topics section, if you know where it is, finding all of them on your own is basically impossible. That's the market gap that PinClicks filled. They've already gathered over 10 million idea pages, also called interests, and you can access them easily through the Interest Explorer tab. This saves you a lot of time and gives you keyword ideas directly tied to Pinterest search volumes. Another game-changing feature in PinClicks is the ability to track your own website's rankings on Pinterest search. Just like Google SEO tools show you how your pages rank for specific keywords, PinClicks Rank Tracker allows you to see where your website stands in Pinterest search results. It's the first and the only tool that does it. It tracks positions for logged out users, so the results aren't influenced by your personal search history. Each ranking comes with a date, giving you a snapshot of your performance over time. Keep in mind that Pinterest's algorithm updates frequently, so rankings will fluctuate quite frequently on Pinterest, definitely more often than in Google. 
pins might drop and then regain positions in a couple of days, but PinClix handles these updates automatically. You don't need to manually refresh anything. If you're interested in learning how to use PinClix, I've actually added a step-by-step -step tutorial about it to my Pinterest course. You can join using the link in the description, or if you're already a member of my course, just log in and check out the new lessons in the Pinterest SEO module. Now, when setting up your Pinterest account, a lot of your time will go into keyword and competitor research. That's why I think it's the best time to use the five-day free trial of PinClix at this stage. You can grab it through my affiliate link in the description below. If you choose to use my link, I will earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. It's a free way to support my channel, but of course, it's completely up to you. Now, I have to mention that Pinterest SEO is a bit different from Google in a way that you don't have to target very long tail keywords with low competition to succeed on Pinterest. You see, this platform doesn't care much about your domain authority and the age of your site. In fact, newer sites often get priority distribution in Pinterest search results as they have a lot of fresh URLs, new pages that they can feed to Pinterest. So Pinterest loves fresh content. When I check the stats uh, for my own blog, most of the pins that drive me traffic are actually recent pins that I created maybe a couple of months ago. So just remember this, on Pinterest, you should not avoid popular keywords with seemingly high competition. It doesn't matter that it's high. What matters is that there are a lot more users looking for this keyword on this platform. Your site competes with older sites and your site has a great chance to win even if it's new, so you can confidently target high search volume keywords on Pinterest. You will hardly ever rank for them on Google, but you will rank for them on Pinterest. I also often get this question about the content quality and structure for Pinterest versus for Google. Things that do well on Pinterest are usually less text heavy and they include lots of vertical images. You know, Pinterest is a visual search engine. So your article, if it's optimized for Pinterest, will often look like this. Just a list of images and short descriptions between them. It's not the type of content that usually does really well on Google. But here is a pro trick that many bloggers started using lately. To avoid Google penalties for shallow content that has mostly images and very little text in them, and to still get Pinterest traffic with these listicles and roundup posts, you can create them on your site and add a de-index checkbox in your SEO plugin to them. This way, these articles will be perfectly indexed and they will work for you on Pinterest, but they will not get any traffic from Google and they will not affect your site's overall quality in the eyes of the Google's algorithm. Now, if you learned something new from this video, maybe it was actually this little de-index trick, give me um, a like and subscribe. This signals me that I should make more videos like this one. Before you close this page, check out my detailed Pinterest SEO tutorial video with all the updates for this year. I will link it for you up there. See you in that next one.